you some news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is November 18th, 2022. One week until Black Friday. Which I'm actually not even all that excited about. I haven't been excited about Black Friday in a long time. And I don't know if I'm just getting too old for all this people bullshit or what. Or because the sales suck. Or because... <clears throat> yeah, probably because the sales suck for the most part. So, 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 this week. This week. You may think, based on current trends in news, that we would be starting with... With a... With, with a with an Elon Musk Twitter story. You would be wrong. It's like our third story that we're going to get through. But the first stop, Blizzard Entertainment and NetEase suspending game services in China. This is like massive. This is this is an agreement that went into place in like 2008 or something. And in 2023, it's ending. They're suspending it. This is going to impact, impact WoW, Hearthstone, Warcraft 3, Reforge, Overwatch, <laughs> Overwatch 2, Diablo 3, anything StarCraft related, uh, and Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> Diablo Immortal is actually on a separate agreement. They're on a separate agreement. Now, isn't there a, uh, oh, fuck, I just, I just cut myself somehow. Oh, that's right, it's where I got sliced by a cat. Nice, I just opened it up in front of you guys. Uh, yeah, this is pretty big news because, you know, we know that there is a substantial uh, user base uh, that uses you know, um, that plays World of Warcraft, everything. You would think it would be like super, like just super impactful to their finances and everything, but we don't want to know anything about that because right now they're in the middle of a transition, uh, an acquisition from uh, from Microsoft. And a lot of people are thinking that maybe that's the reason why they're suspending this deal. And actually I saw Tally said the same thing and I agreed. I was like, oh yeah, maybe that's the reason why. But then when you read this press release here, uh, sorry, yeah, just excuse me. Uh, but, you know, and you have so many cats and they just slice you up and shit. I got little pinholes and everything all over me. I got to put little things on there it's so come from play <laughs> if they were not planning on renewing until they the transition uh, uh the acquisition was complete then they wouldn't have said this part quote the two parties have not reached a deal to renew the agreements that is consistent with blizzard's operating principles and commitments to players and employees so that is like that that to me means that there is no like like, let's wait and see what happens with the Microsoft agreement, because that's probably what they would have said. So, yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting position that Blizzard's in because such a huge fan base or a player base over there. We know this. Uh, uh, and then it's going to be cut off out of 2023. They're probably going to be renegotiating with other companies or something to get uh, the games over there. But uh, it's entirely possible that there just won't be any Blizzard games over there or like the ones that don't already have licenses in China. The Chinese government pretty much has their hands in everything. So if Blizzard is maybe like there's a new policy because they have been getting a little bit stricter with uh, regulations in China with uh, game game uh, approvals and everything like they just recently allowed games to be approved, period. Um, so with all that stuff happening, maybe there's something with like Chinese government being involved with the personal data and all that. Maybe that's something they don't want to do and they're doing this to protect their players. So it's entirely possible that this is Blizzard saying, you know what, we don't really want the money that much. Um, <laughs> But it's possible, man. It's possible. Or maybe they're like, ah, you know what? Someone's going to find out. And then we're in, they're in deep trouble again. <laughs> so it says here, it says upcoming releases for Dragonflight and all these other things are, are still going to go on as planned through the end of the year. So you could you could play Dragonflight and I guess like an expansion to Hearthstone or something before the servers go down. But they said they're going to stop selling it. Power level of the poof. Yeah. So it's like three weeks. Like you wouldn't even make it to the first content patch. Not even close. Actually, we don't want China's money anymore. Yeah, it's just weird. It's just super weird that they would they would just uh, they would make the switch for that reason. But also, they've made it pretty clear that they are doing this because NetEase isn't meeting to their standards. So I guess all we could do right now is wait until January 2023 and see if they've announced by then announced uh, any other deals with any other companies for distribution. But remember, like any other any other big game company that has the distribution capability for a games uh for a publisher as big as blizzard in china is going to have ties with the chinese government i mean any company will period so the the larger the company the more the deeper the ties i'm sure all that bliss chunk stuff all that stuff bottom a couple years <laughs> how bad you have to be to fall short of blizzard standards i don't man i don't even know but i have to wait for the preach video okay we'll have to wait for the preach video to 
before we before we place any judgment or anything, all right? Okay, but it says NetEase boss blames damage done by a jerk for Activision shutdown of World of Warcraft Overwatch China. Just so you know, it seems like a lot of bullshit. It just feels like it's it just feels like is this not if it wasn't Eurogamer reporting this, I would be like, okay, yeah, whatever. You know, like <laughs> like like seriously, like a seriously, like a major Chinese company distributor would come out and say like oh a jerk. It's like what? Yeah, Bobby Phil. Yeah, who could it be? Who knows? Um, but then you go to the LinkedIn what's referenced here, and it says it says here is that he's the president of Global Investment Partnerships at NetEase Game, and he has a legit account. Chris Chung, yeah, Chris Chung, somebody I know in the industry that follows him. So for me, that means that this guy is legit. As a gamer who spent ten thousand hours in the world of Azeroth, Starcraft, Overwatch, I feel so heartbroken as I will never, I will no long, not longer have the access uh, to my account. And memories next year uh, one day uh, when what has happened behind the scenes could be told uh, developers and gamers will have a whole new level of understanding of how much damage a jerk can make feel terrible for players who lived in these worlds so like this is a pretty like damning i mean to whoever the jerk is right this is a pretty damning like kind of you know testimony here from like somebody who does work with the uh, with company here they can't necessarily just hop onto a vpn and just have a have a good time on the internet right there's there's a lot of um i mean imagine like if you use a vpn and then that's like you know you could be arrested for that by your government like that just sounds wild to me but apparently that's a thing that's a thing you know this is not going to be a huge loss i read that NetEase said that they're only going to lose like you know a fraction of a percent or not a fraction of a percent it was like a three to eleven percent or something i think it was like eleven percent that i read uh of their uh their overall uh, income revenue and so they're just kind of like you know it's not going to affect our day-to-day -day or whatever obviously we're not getting any information from the blizzard side of things like how this is going to impact them and we won't know how this will impact them until we get to a um uh to one of our quarterly uh, shareholder calls and that's what we, we might get some clues but remember they haven't been telling us how many people have been playing how many subscriptions uh world of warcraft has had for like years like years years so what what ma what makes us think that they're gonna all of a sudden come out and be very forthcoming with that information like hey so we lost x numbers of millions of people because of the losing china so i don't know they're gonna have to do some kind of like verbal gymnastics <laughs> in order to make that not sound terrible so we got companies doing terrible things uh last week we talked about mick gordon mick gordon's uh beef with uh marty stratton who's the executive producer for doom eternal mick gordon is a uh is the producer writer performer composer whatever he made the doom 2016 soundtrack and much of what you hear sonically uh in um in doom eternal not not necessarily his compositions but definitely his uh you know his his sound uh and he had uh some long-standing beef with them we went over it pretty like in pretty in-depth last week uh and this week there has been an update uh and his, in his initial accusation he basically pointed out with tons of evidence that marty stratton and other members of bethesda basically treated him and the rest of the team like shit uh, and had completely unrealistic expectations uh, for how music was supposed to be written for games, uh, and so and then and then threw him under the bus for the whole thing <laughs> in a Reddit post that, by the way, is still up today. And so he held his breath for two years, assembling the largest uh, uh, fucking comeback counter whatever counter punch a uh, document that you've seen. And again, nothing but evidence and. Uh, screenshots, all kinds of stuff. Now, I did mention last week, I'll mention it again, that I did think that it was strange that he was he was blocking out certain chunks of emails that he was showing us, but the content the content was still damning enough, in my opinion, to not, because like, if the context, all the context that's omitted shows that he was just kind of an asshole, it's like, so what? Like, he's an artist. Like, all artists are some kind of asshole. <laughs> He charged the fist back like someone wants you punching a monitor. Oh man! <laughs> so Bethesda, not not one to know when to shut the fuck up. Apparently, uh, hit back, and they said the reason posted by Mick Gordon both mischaracterized and misinterpreted the team at id Software. The development of Doom Eternal, Marty Stratton, and Chad Mossholder with a one-sided uh, and unjust account of an irreparable professional relationship. It says, we are aware of all the details and history in this matter and unequivocally support Marty, Chad, and the team at id Software. We reject the distortion of the truth uh, and selective representation, a presentation of incomplete facts, and we stand ready with full and complete documented evidence to disclose in an appropriate venue as needed. 
The statements posted online have incited harassment and threats of, and of violence against Marty, Chad, and the id Software team. Any threats of harassment directed towards members of our teams will be met with swift and appropriate action to protect their health and safety. And it says we're proud and blah, blah, blah. So this is, uh, this is a pretty bad look <laughs> for Bethesda. So Marty attacked him, right? With the, with the, with the Reddit thread that, uh, here it is right here. With this Reddit thread that he started or that he posted that was, went in depth about how basically, you know, Mick Gordon ruined the game. You should direct your hatred towards him. Um, and it's still up. It's still fucking up. Okay, and that was one of his main gripes. One of Mick's main gripes is that this post still exists and it's still up and it's still false. Uh, and Bethesda is basically saying that they have the receipts and they're willing to go to court for it. But they know that he won't take them to court because part of Mick's, uh, Mick's commentary was that they're basically goading him into challenging them, challenging them into like taking them to court because they know they'll just bury him, right? And that's basically what happened. So they know, so they can just say whatever the fuck they want, right? I'm, they're totally bullshitting man this is the most bullshit ass bullshit i've ever seen from a fucking game company like against anybody that works there or ex-employees or contractors whatever it's fucking terrible they're really doubling down they could have just not said shit thankfully pretty much everybody i mean including mick he responded so go go you um that jerk ruined everything pretty much so yeah i, I appreciate that mick uh, jumps in here with his own side of the story uh, not letting the narrative run away from us. Uh, and he actually ratioed them, technically, uh, with uh, 15,300 likes and uh, Mick Gordon getting 37,600. So get ratioed. But anyways, this is where we're at right now. Basically, Bethesda saying Colin is trying to call his bluff. And we know it's, they're full of shit. Thankfully, everybody in the community sees this. And everybody will conveniently forget the fact when the next Fallout game or whatever comes out. So... So, <laughs> so whatever the next title comes out, eh, well, eh, it's fine. You know, eh, it's water under the bridge. Water under the bridge. It's fine. Last week we talked about how uh, 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 Eli Lilly, which was a big like penicillin uh, pharmaceutical company, um, they had a fake account that paid eight dollars to have a check mark, and basically said that uh, uh, it started this whole fiasco by claiming that they were going to offer like penicillin for free. And it looked official. And then, then Eli Lilly responded to it saying, no, it's not true. Everyone's like, well, why isn't it? And so it made them look bad. Well, obviously, uh, their next step is to uh, cease all campaigns with, with Twitter. So <laughs> it's probably one of many. <laughs> probably one, a more, one of, of many uh, advertisers that are freezing things there. Uh, despite Elon saying that the traffic is up to all time peaks, which I'm sure they are. Of course they are. Everyone, everyone, everyone wants to stop and rubberneck a car crash. Uh, see, there's more firings that are happening. Um, this was, let me see, which one was this? Let's see. Uh, Elon has fired numerous employees who were critical of him on Twitter and the company Slack, according to protocol. So yeah, that was another thing that was happening. There's a lot of detailed tweets and everything that came out with that. For, like people basically coming out on Twitter and saying, you know, oh no, you're wrong. Cause he was claiming things were happening on Android and all that stuff. And he was like, Hey, somebody will be like, Hey, I'm the actual Android developer and you're wrong. Right. And it turned to this whole fucking thing. And he's just firing people. Like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> Captain of the Twitter Tannic. Exactly. Uh, more weird emails. This one came out on uh, Monday, the fork in the road email. Did you guys read this? Oh my God. All right. So it's short. So listen, Going forward, to build a breakthrough Twitter 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. This will mean working long hours at high intensity. Only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. Twitter will also be much more engineer-driven. Design and product management will still be very important to report to me, but those writing great code will constitute the majority of our team and have the greatest sway. At its heart, Twitter is a software and servers company, so I think this makes sense. If you are sure that you want to be part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below. Anyone who has not done so by 5 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, just yesterday, uh, will receive three months of severance. Whatever decision you make, thank you for your efforts to make Twitter successful. Oh, God. Like, how many people are left? 300 out of 4,000? So, so, oh, man. So, that's what was reported, was that hundreds, sorry, hundreds of employees say no to being part of Elon Musk's extremely hardcore thing. Uh, that shit's illegal in many countries in the world. So, yeah, it's, 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 it, def, it Elon coming out and making these these public statements as the CEO of the company, despite 
Kaplan, in a recent testi- uh, testimony that he gave to uh, Delaware courts, he said that he doesn't want to be the CEO of any company. He, he's a techno king or whatever the fuck. Um, but despite, <clears throat> though, because he is in that position, he puts something in writing saying this and he just puts it out. Like now everybody internally has to like, you know, backflip and figure out like how the fuck to make it work. But everyone's quitting, you know, it's like everyone has to, I mean, HR has got to go through and like every country that we have an employee in, it's going to have different rules, laws and stuff like that with how you are, are allowed to just like tell somebody, are you going to be hardcore or not? Okay, time to go. Like you can't do that in some in some places. <laughs> Twitter lot. Yeah, I've read that Twitter has lost. I mean, I've read Twitter has lost so many departments and I only know what's true or what's not. It's hard to tell, honestly, which is why I've hardly included any of them. But, uh, but, I, but I will tell you, though. Well, actually, according, let me read a quote from this. It says, Twitter had roughly 2,900 remaining employees before the deadline on Thursday. Because remember, they already did like a huge cut. So from 7,500 to 2,900. Um, and uh, remaining and departing Twitter employees hold the verge that given the scale of resignations this week, they expect the platform to start breaking soon. But Elon says, he says that uh, uh, that only the best people are staying. The best people are staying. So he's not super worried. Uh, there are unsubstantiated claims from companies like Blind that say that there's only uh, Twitter, uh, 238 people at Twitter. Uh, there are articles that that uh, uh, that say that he, people are being called back, that, are, that have been fired because too many people have left. <laughs> I mean, there's even, there's evidence of this because emails are going out. This is Zoe, this is Zoe uh, Schiffer, by the way. She apparently has an in, so a bunch of people at Twitter who are just keeping her abreast of all the internal emails. So basically any email that goes to Twitter employees goes to her. Uh, and so it says here, uh, an email from Elon to engineering team. Anyone who can actually write software, please report to the 10th floor at 2 p.m. today. Before doing so, please email me a bullet point summary of what your code commits have achieved in the past six months. And he's asking for up to 10 screenshots of the most salient lines of code from Twitter engineers. <laughs> it is oh yeah, here we go. And an email with remote to for remote Twitter engineers. Elon Musk says he wants to speak to people on video. Only those who cannot physically get to Twitter HQ are excused. But if possible, I would encourage you to fly to SF to present in person. <laughs> because <laughs> we all have like private jets and shit elon man i don't know if that's like delusional like completely out of touch or what uh are the screenshots like office space flare 10 is the minimum but more more would be better more would be i have to, like flare yeah going there with like a binder full of uh code just buy a plane ticket bro yeah no problem but no people being let go from twitter uh, uh they're gonna have a three month you know, supposedly a three month severance pay that's going to take them into next year comfortably into like February, probably. Um, plus, whatever vacation they have, they'll get paid out to them. So, let's say if maybe a lot of these places people end up accumulating like upwards of three weeks to 12 weeks. So, some people are going to be sitting comfortably until like March uh, off of, of pay and they'll have plenty of time to go and find uh, a, a new job. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's like you're, he really set himself up to let go of a lot of people at once. <laughs> by offering them like the best possible deal, right? Why would he offer a deal that nobody would want to refuse? And that meant that means leaving the company. Last night, I don't know if you guys saw this one. It's actually at the top of Reddit, but uh, it's it's their headquarters here um, had a projection that was uh, playing on it. Sorry, that was playing on it that, uh, well, you could see it, but... <laughs> <laughs> apparently it was being projected from like a, a apartment across the street or something like that so there ain't shit they could do <laughs> space karen i saw space karen was uh was trending on top of everything else there has been some new twitter policy that he's that he came out earlier today and he talked about i mean everything's in flux man it's really hard to report on this stuff because half of the shit's not going to be in anything next week uh but <laughs> he says a new Twitter policy is freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. And he just basically describes that if something is deemed to be negative, it's not going to get the same reach that it would uh, if it was positive or something like that. Uh, obviously, this raises a lot of questions. Uh, if people are asking, you know, like, who decides? Who decides? What he's describing really is just shadow banning, though. You know, it's like you're not really changing the policy because shadow banning already kind of exists. 
Um, but he does, he did say, uh, this is just like also a load of bullshit. I don't even fucking know about this, but he did say that, uh, you know, he, he expects to find someone else to run Twitter. Uh, and actually he said this, there was a call that he was on. I don't have the link for it. It was a transcription, but, uh, uh, there was, uh, the call that he made to the Delaware courts where he was discussing, uh, his pay that he got from, uh, from the Twitter board last year, which, which is basically what made him like the richest man of the world. Uh, it was like a $55 billion payout that the board came up with at Tesla. And the board says that they came up with it. Them, they came up with it themselves, but there was a, but there was a lawsuit filed from a shareholder who had nine Tesla shares who uh, says that it was a gross amount of money. It was way too much money. Um, and it, it, it violates his fiduciary duty as a CEO to take care of the company. If it's taking, if he's taking that much money, uh, so anyways, it was this whole call that he was on uh, and he was being grilled by, um, you know, by you know, prosecutors or whatever. And he he basically said that he doesn't want to be CEO of any company. And, you know, he wants to find someone else to run Twitter. Uh, and it he just he's trying to pitch himself as being like, oh, I'm just I'm just a, a, an energy that floats between these companies and blah, blah, blah. I'm not really the CEO, but I work all the time and I do all this stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also tried to get around, I guess, I guess he said that he signed a contract for that pay, uh, but because he signed it under duress that it's not legal or some shit, I don't fucking know. It sounds like some rich person bullshit, the techno king. Yeah. Um, I mean, so many people don't realize he bought Tesla and SpaceX. Like he's, he's in some genius founder. Yeah. 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 But, um, <laughs> we're all finding out now. And like I said, so much of this stuff is in flux. There's the whole Twitter blue thing. Like, I mean, okay, like I, I, I wasn't going to show this part too because it's just more bloat. But like he says, punting relaunch of blue verified to November 29th to make sure that it is rock solid. Right. And then Zoe Schiffer gets word back saying that the designers leading Elon Musk blue verified products are out. Layoffs are happening everywhere still, though. It's not just Twitter. Um, so it's hard to, it's hard to look at Twitter. I mean, obviously we could look at Twitter and say, yeah, they're la they're letting people go uh, way too soon or way too much, way too often, or just very brazenly. Uh, but the rest of the tech industry is also letting go of a lot of folks. We've, we've kind of briefly touched on like little uh, uh, stories that popped up here and there. Facebook last, last week, meta, they let go of like 11,000 people. Uh, uh, Amazon now is saying they're going to let go of like 10,000 people. This, this group that they're planning on laying off. And I guess this is coming soon. Mostly, it says layouts are expected to target those working in the company's Echo devices and an Alexa voice assistant, uh, retail operations, and HR. So the common theme that I'm seeing with a lot of companies is that they're letting go of some people, some parts of their HR, uh, which means that a lot of companies are just going into a hiring freeze. Like, you know, part of HR is also like the recruitment phase, right? So... Yeah, it's 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 possible that because you know nobody's really hiring for some reason, or because things are slowing down, and companies are not they're putting hiring freezes uh, in place. They don't need that the that personnel, so they're letting some of them go. But that's only one fraction of it. Like there's still the Echo devices and the Alexa voice assistant. I don't know why those those industries are going down. I feel like everybody has an an Alexa device, which is probably one of the reasons why it's going away. Saturation has been reached, and so now innovating with like random ass, you know little Alexa cancel and a little Amazon devices that, you know, we don't need anymore. Maybe that's the reason why I'm being let go, but I expected this to uh, kind of bleed over into Twitch, of course. Um, <clears throat> and there's one article on this. That, well, the, all the articles I can find on this are behind paywalls. So I had to find people that I could trust that read the article, <laughs> but Twitch also has its own layoffs, uh, but it was, again, it's the recruiting team uh, because they're going to reduce hiring in 2023. So, yeah, this is a, um, and they say they said that uh, there would be no further cuts amid layoffs of parent companies. So they said that, you know, Amazon, Amazon's layoffs are their own. This is just related to their own stuff. So, uh, yeah, this is I, every industry or every, every corner of this industry, uh, tech industry, gaming industry, like we're seeing hiring freezes or we're, we're seeing, um, you know, uh, your layoffs or whatever, but my boy Corey Donis of Wannis went out, and got a job right in the middle of the winter, right in the midst of all this. Somehow, sorry, Corey, just, con just congratulations. That's all. Uh, many of these companies expanded during COVID and thought that things would continue the same when it receded. That's true. Yeah, a lot of them are uh, 
uh, they did kind of expand a little bit in certain areas, especially like online gaming, right? The only social media company that isn't in freeze and is actually doing super well is TikTok. Yeah. Although TikTok, I mean, that's a whole other conversation there, but you know, TikTok is something that it, I'd be surprised if it's still around by, you know, in a couple of years, there's just, uh, there's so much like just at, just at a base level, there's a lot of like red scare type stuff going on. It's kind of like, oh no, China's spying on us and all that stuff. And there are in, like cases of that actually happening. Um, but uh, TikTok having had its own issues with like the copy pasta fiasco where they were like looking at your clipboard and what you brought into the app and all these other things, like there could be some regulation things that come down and that could uh, be more damning for companies like, you know, TikTok because it's a Chinese company uh, versus other social medias. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, they're getting, TikTok's getting so much revenue from, uh, I mean, I'd imagine they get so much revenue from the States and from everywhere else that uh, I can't imagine they're running on debt. Their, their data they're pulling in is so valuable. Uh, it's the entire InfoSec community. TikTok is a privacy nightmare. The entire Zoom community installs TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> We've already seen what can happen in the midterms with the, with the youth vote, with the Zoomers coming out like strong. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to fuck with TikTok right now. TikTok might be like protected status, you know, until they actually do something that like can be, and then they do something that's so damning that it is like, we have to do this kind of thing. Like we have to shut it down. There was a, there is a cryptocurrency exchange that went down again, another one, right? Some other, so there's another crypto scam thing that kind of went down. Um, and this one is pretty deep. We're not going to go deep into who FTX or Sam uh, Bankman Freed is, but I will show you this, just a couple of things to give you, just kind of paint a picture, okay? Sam Bankman Freed, in just the past five years, Sam Bankman went free. Went from buying his first Bitcoin to become a, becoming a multi-billionaire. The FTX founder is now worth an estimated $11 billion. He could have bought that Jordan jersey if he wanted to. His exchange is now worth $32 billion, and it brought in about a billion dollars in revenue just last year. CNBC's Kate Rooney has more on the CEO's rise to the top of the crypto industry. They call him the J.P. Morgan of crypto, right? And then, if you watch the Super Bowl... You caught this little number with Larry David. Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. Now, if you listen to Larry instead of... You would have been in pretty good shape. FTX does end up basically going bankrupt. Uh, billions of dollars are gone lost something uh there were a number of other like um i want to say exchanges or something i'm not quite sure that my terminology on this and understanding of some of how these like kind of central hubs of crypto function or it's kind of uh it's not good <laughs> but there were other companies that had funds that were locked in with ftx when this whole thing went down and so these peripheral companies also were impacted by this uh and i mean it says here more than a million investors yeah easily easily there were some assessments i guess for acquisition or something that was happening between other other crypto companies and i guess they got in and they took a look at the finances and they were like whoa 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 whoa!" and so that's when shit basically started falling apart it was already kind of falling apart i guess by that point anyway so so it's 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 done right like people have lost tons of money um the founder of it uh sam this this is such a really weird tweet thread okay he tweeted this out he said what H A P P E N E D. And you should know that the spacing of each of these tweets in this thread is like, I mean, this is November 13th, 701, November 13th, 749, November 14th, 830 AM, November 14th, 955 AM. It's like every few hours. Like it's weird. It's some Silicon Valley, Gavin Belson, weird kind of shit, you know, like wackos they have in there that are supposed to be caricatures of like real people that have scammed these industries. And these people are actually like acting like this in real life. And so anyways, some 20 things down, he finally goes in and he says that, you know, he's trying to do, he's working with regulators. He's trying to do what he can to save this company or, and to uh, get money back to, you know, the end user. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> And yeah, it's days later. Yeah. Uh, 
So this is this this is having this does have an impact uh in gaming, right? I mean, FTX was a major two hundred and ten million dollars over the course of I think it was five years. I'm not sure. It could be five, maybe ten years. I think it was five years. Um, with uh, TSM. And so TSM put out a statement saying that they are, you know, after monitoring the evolving situation, discussing internally, we're suspending our partnership with FTX effectively immediately. Uh, I think there was actually some uh, where they, they actually were some esports events where they're actually covering it up with like tape or something. Not going to have a huge hit on TSM, according to them, but $210 million seems like a lot of money to me over the course of who oh, knows how many years. An entire sports stadium was built with FTX. Jesus Christ. It's crazy how how big and how i guess how admired this guy was and i don't know anything about him right um but you know he was he's on the front of like the forbes 400 or whatever uh just like what's her face holmes the ones that's been sentenced sentenced today for uh theranos project uh she was sentenced today for 11 years for scamming basically everybody <laughs> and so now this guy who's working with regulators uh you know probably gonna end up going down the same path or something so yeah, TSM is uh, is gonna be fine. <laughs> we just want to check with TSM. All the FTX shit though, definitely is far reaching. Like, we're gonna see the impact of that across a number of different uh, uh, industries. Because like, like I said, there's a lot of people that have money just sitting on that exchange. I mean, it's like this is kind of like if uh, if like um, yeah, the difference is she scanned rich people. The guy, yeah, the guy would get off easily. Yeah. Still in the crypto world here, though. There's more scams, of course. Uh, this one is... Uh, it's This one's kind of... I'm kind of on the fence about this one. Go for the pores. Yeah, exactly. So this is Aisho Speed. Uh, Aisho Speed, he's, a, he's a, a YouTube streamer. I don't know if he's allowed to be shown on Twitch or anything. He was banned or if he just streams on YouTube. But anyways, he was in a... This poor kid. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about this, too. Um, he was uh, doing a promotional stream for a... Uh, a crypto and there are these other guys in the room now for first of all first of all he's 17 years old okay so let's just just keep that in mind right he's 17 years old uh big streamers paradox stuff all over the place um uh, 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 uh coffee from uh do i have his video here let me see coffee zilla actually gets on with these guys and discusses with them and i feel like coffee zilla was trying to look out for this kid right uh i show speed running bands Andrew Tate's typical audience, literal child. Yeah. He, she, yeah. So here's a clip from that video. Instead of, instead of jumping to different topics, y'all said y'all can come no, with you, the answers, you, you right? So is, is, that so is, it a, is it a get rich quick scheme? Is it a get rich quick scheme? Yes or no? Is it a get rich quick scheme? Yes or no? No, no, no. Answer the question I'm asking right now. Is it a get rich quick scheme? Yes or no? No, of course it's not. How can you turn around and say it's a get rich quick scheme when we're looking to acquire? This is a conversation. A conversation. Not that. 10x to 100x. November Stop getting off topic. Stop. To hey, you know I got you. Off. Hey, bro, you know I got you. So, so when he says 10x to 100x, he's talking about how they promote this currency and this whole network of uh, of games and whatever that like they say are AAA games, but they just look like like shitty Roblox clones. Uh, and he's saying that in in this documentation, this promotional stuff that they're saying 10x to 100x um, of a return of your money that you invest into this into this crypto. And he's trying to call them on it, and he, they won't. They're basically just dodging the questions. And so, you know, this is a whole there's a whole video here where he goes into this. It's a two hour video, and, and it's just it's just devolves into just constant nonsense man uh I don't, i'm not gonna click on a random place and just play but i'm sure the whole thing is jam-packed with bullshit um yeah they say triple a in the interviews and then they say indian on the ads that's true that's true and and you know coffee uh he holds their feet to the fire on that as well uh literal literally unreal engine stock asset games so you know they there was some more there was some discussion that happened that took place um you know over the stream uh that uh, that was mentioned over here um <clears throat> And I guess there was a moment, it was a hot mic moment where uh, Aisho Speed was talking with the guys because everybody, everybody in chat was like, L, like this is, this is scam, L scam, L scam, whatever they're saying, it's a fucking scam. Uh, and there was a hot mic moment where the, he muted and he, I guess he commuted and turned off a stream or something, but he was still, uh, you know, you still kind of, kind of hear him. And you could hear Aisho Speed like talking, they were trying to talk about like, everyone saying L, L, you know, L in chat, like, what are we going to do? Whatever. How are we going to? you know, convince them otherwise or whatever. Um, it doesn't really seem like it's too much of a hot mic moment because it just sounds like, you know, it's like this kid is getting bombarded with everybody saying, hey, it's a scam, it's a scam, it's a scam. And he's turning to these guys who he trusted and he's saying, what can we, what can, what do we, what do I say? What do I do? Because to him, he thinks these guys are trying to help him. 
But to me, what I see is I see a bunch of grown ass men trying to take advantage of some kid's popularity and ride his coattails and pimp whatever the fuck they want and try to make some money off of it. I I, I don't know what I show speeds like history is. I know he I know he was the one that on Fourth of July like he lit a bunch of fireworks on his bed or something like that. I don't know. I'm not saying the kid is brilliant, okay? And maybe maybe some of the dumb shit he's done in the past should should be taken into consideration when we look at this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's not some super genius scammer, okay? <laughs> so, so thankfully, like everybody in chat is trashing these guys to their. Fa I mean, you know, they're on the stream, right? And you could just see L chat or L scam, L scam. Um, <laughs> so thankfully, everybody was jumping on board with uh, trashing these dudes. He actually he has an apology video. Um, I don't know apology video. It's more like he was just talking about it, but. Some serious, ex serious exploitation. So check this out. Y'all don't know what I do for y'all, bro. Let me just give y'all a quick, a quick little quote. I do so much stuff for y'all, bro. I made a mistake. You know, I'm not that smart. I'm be honest, bro. Just, just at that part. I think we show this on news. I think we show. I think we actually show this on news. <laughs> Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward. <laughs> fireworks <laughs> so anyways uh so yeah what do you say you know i'm not that smart i'm be honest bro <laughs> but as i go i get smarter and smarter bro yeah i made a little mistake you know that i wish i never did but i'm not a scammer bro a day of my life i will never scam you guys just remember that bro i believe him you know like <laughs> i believe that he's not a scammer i believe he's just he needs he needs a manager <laughs> <laughs> I know scam is what a scammer would say, man. I mean, it's 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 different. Like if he was if he was some twenty something or whatever, I would be like, okay, no, no, no. But <laughs> I think I think he's just someone that needs a manager. He needs somebody to help him help him out a little bit. This is his one time, right? Like in this in this industry, like you you could get a pass at something like this, especially for somebody like him at his age and given his history, uh, <laughs> you can get a pass. And for me, that's I mean, for me, it's like I'm gonna give him a pass because if his name comes up again related to some crypto bullshit, then it's like okay, dude. So I mean, you could draw whatever conclusions you want, but to me, I just feel like it's just some dumbass kid that just needs a manager, man. Needs somebody needs 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 a stage mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what he needs, right? He needs a stage mom. Speaking of money, <laughs> Discord. Discord got fined 800,000 euros. Did you guys know this? GDPR these nuts? That's right. That's right. Fine 800,000 euros. Don't worry. No, no, no. It's fine. It's, it's, it's actually not that, that, okay. It's a privacy issue. It's not that big of a deal though. Like, this is a pretty good breakdown here. So, they have uh discord was let's see a french data authority uh found that discord did not have written retention policy there were nearly 2.5 million french users in the discord database that had not been used for over three years discord is now committed to deleting the accounts after two years of inactivity so they had accounts that just they didn't delete after two years and that's part of the gdpr privacy thing is they don't want people to have lingering accounts with lingering possibly unencrypted passwords and shit. Uh, also, their password policy was too lenient for a lot of these accounts, so they got fined for that. Uh, also, their... Um uh, oh yeah, their voice, their, their voice wasn't kicking people out pro pro properly, uh, and so people were able to, in voice, were able to hear what somebody might be doing in the room. Uh, it's also a French thing, it's not a big deal until the Germans start fighting you. <laughs> I'm fairly certain the Discord is owned by Tencent. Uh, I think they own a, a portion of it, I'm not sure. Like, storing? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, can I get down on this? Can I get some money? <laughs> Anyways, uh, nobody cares about the French. I'm sure I'm sure Discord cares about the French and their $800,000 fine, okay? It is a fine. It is related to your privacy. But upon investigation, it doesn't really seem like it's that big of a deal. Apparently, Discord's revenue in the second quarter of 2022 was 28 million. An increase over 5 million compared to the same quarter. Well, their, their income doesn't really, you know, that income doesn't... How much money they make doesn't really matter. It's what you can put on paper. <laughs> uh, so this this uh, came across my radar recently. Rob Sheridan, one of my favorite artists, uh, showed showed me that there is a goth target 
newsletter that went out to a lot of people, people on the mailing list and on their site, uh, where <laughs> Bill Juice for sale goth target. So <laughs> I know some of you guys are old goths. <laughs> I used to have, I used to have a, um, I mean, I used to hot topic and Spencer's gifts. I had, uh, bunch of like jewelry and everything i had this, this one like claw finger thing that i would wear i don't know why this claw finger thing that i would wear had like an eyeball or something on it i don't fuck. and i'd always wear it and yeah and then like the necklaces and all that shit and my my polyester shirts man <laughs> uh, such a mainstream goth <laughs> pearl jam goth <laughs> Cocaine finger device, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> so, anyways, they have they have this uh uh they have a goth collection, and all this I was kind of like, eh, whatever, whatever, whatever. His commentary on it is pretty funny, and then it says visit goth target in the metaverse, and so uh he managed to get a screenshot here of goth <laughs> of goth target in Facebook's metaverse, and it is. Should I zoom in so you can see? I want to make sure you guys can see all of the detail here. <laughs> it's so goth. It's so goth. It's so goth. Where mall goth mic pictures? Oh, I have some. I have some. <laughs> what detail? So, um, ah, oh, this is unbelievably tacky. So my commentary on this is when I see this, I'm like, immensely disappointed even more so disappointed in uh zuckerberg's metaverse because whenever whenever you have like a company like kind of two companies working together to promote a product right you're kind of both promoting that product you know is this really the best that you could come up with for target like i i don't believe that target made their own world i believe that facebook made a world for Target to use as part of this promotion. Target went to Facebook and said, hey, we would love, we would love to promote. And maybe we could do like a metaverse tie-in or something like that. Or maybe even Facebook was like, oh man, we love to do a metaverse tie-in. Can we do that? We'll, we'll discount your, your ad package, ad campaign a little bit. Which is which happens. This shit really happens, right? It's all negotiation. Everything, anything's up for grabs. And so <laughs> so somebody at Facebook probably was like, Yeah, we'll put that, you know, we'll whip it up, no problem. And that's what they got. Terrible. The issue was the low price. Target only gave them a, like a cool one mil for the ad. <sighs> they Facebook should still be doing whatever they can to keep the I guess the perception of metaverse like in check. They sh they they're already spending billions of dollars on this project. It should some of that should go towards making sure that anything customer facing looks good. For now, right? It's bad. It is bad VR chat. Yeah. And the whole point of doing a metaverse integration is to showcase metaverse. Yeah. This was a tweet that went out that's deleted. It's not bad or anything. It was just kind of like a realization, kind of like a, a moment, like a light bulb moment for uh, somebody who plays Modern Warfare 2. And I wanted, to, I wanted to point it out because I know a lot of us are already past this point, but it's nice that to see people who are like hardcore dedicated, like Modern Warfare fans, like coming out and being like, well, hold on a second. Like maybe this isn't what I want well, as, as much fun as I'm being told it is. So this is Tyler. I am Wildcat. His algorithms run the universe, man. Modern Warfare 2 is not a video game. It's an algorithm designed to capture as much human attention as possible and convert it into dollars. How long before we have movies slash TV shows that are created by algorithms to maximize viewership? Maybe we do already. We do. Uh, I'm woke to this matrix, man. I'm breaking out. I need video games with some substance, not data-driven engagement, optimized cash suckers. Every video game becoming a live service capable of taking your money 24-7 is ruining gaming. Welcome to the party. Uh, he's, there's more here too. He says, uh, obviously I'm just being goofy, but like, dude, gaming feels soulless lately. There's no magic, no spark, no passion. I had high expectations for this gaming season and so far it feels empty. Pokemon finna fix it though, I think. Just a shame I don't have much of a Pokemon audience. <sighs> One disappointment after another, Tyler. So the Pokemon he's referring to did come out and it's uh, got some issues. Hey. 
Or how about this one? Pop in. The stuttering, by the way, that was the, that was the, the game. This, that's the game. That's not the video. <laughs> so yes, the 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 new Pokemon Scarlet slash Violet um does have a lot of performance issues. The game has a memory leak. You need to restart it from time to time. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. I mean, you know this too. We all know this. Cinematic 12 FPS. It's crazy me how long it takes them to, for them to shit out stuff like this. It's like for some reason the scene decided to reload all of its assets. Assets. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it does kind of look like that. But just just to point this out, just to point, just to kind of for comparison here. This is a game that was just released now. This is a game from 2015. And I know that you can't compare two different games side by side and say this is this and that. And these are direct comparisons, but this really is a 2015 game. Xenoblade Chronicles X came out uh, on Switch. Old Switch hardware. And this is captured from that. So it's like... It makes me feel like, how? How 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 is Pokemon that bad? Yeah, it, it really... It, yeah, it's truly inexcusable. I don't understand how it's possible. If this is possible. Resting on their laurels. That's why. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. There's really nothing else. <laughs> Each of these games can individually become legends, as we've seen with like older Pokemon games that people still talk about, you know? Not even older, like Pokemon Go, right? Legend. Um, and with every game having that potential, you'd think that they want to put effort into it, but nah, man. <laughs> Some people are saying that they, they, they resorted to fast tracking. Here we go. I found myself... Uh, fast traveling. I found myself frequently fast traveling to avoid performance hitches, hitches while exploring and felt a lack of motivation to wander around catching Pokemon as watching them materialize and then vanish while I was just yards away, shatter my immersion, any immersion that I had. So yeah, it's, it's, it needs work. Last up, there's a very unusual subathon going on right now. It just started like an hour and a half ago uh, and I watched some of it. Um, it is Ludwig. <laughs> and Ludwig is um in a giant plastic box or giant see-through box, glass box, whatever. And right now he's being interviewed wearing a clown. I don't know what happened. He still has 46 hours left. Uh, but just to go back a little bit to the beginning, oh gosh, what is he even doing? Yeah, he's gonna have all kinds of weird shit going on in here. But he can't leave. <laughs> goes we got 48 and a half hours left wait clips are disabled okay <laughs> so he is going to be locked in a glass case he's able to leave to use the restroom um and <laughs> he got pied while having a clown face yeah there's there's a ton of people outside watching him i guess i guess the idea seems that it was inspired by a dutch artist who, who does the same thing regularly uh, like a Dutch like um, band or something that does this type of event basically every year where they perform or something inside of a glass box. Dutch oh Dutch radio station. Sorry, thank you. Dutch radio station. Um, and he's at he's at DreamHack Atlanta right now. But uh, yeah, there, thank you. Dutch radio station has been doing this since 2004. So maybe this is where he got the the inspiration from. But I mean, as a concept for you know for streaming, like this is pretty great. Imagine going to DreamHack and it's like, oh hey, Ludwig's in this box over here on display, and he plays it up too. He says, "I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you know. You can make me do whatever you want. You know, if we want to do this, whatever. Obviously, he has things set up so that he could do this, right? So he can have things like as filler. Uh, but you know, he's taking he's taking requests and everything." Let's go observe the Ludwig animal at the DreamHack Zoo. And he has, yeah, he's referred to himself as basically being, you know, a, in a zoo. Oh my gosh, how long has he been doing this? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, he did start out, it's a subathon, but it start, it's 50 hours was the max. And I guess he owed chat some money or whatever. So, it's basically started out with uh, 50 hours on the clock. So, he's going to be doing the full 50. Uh, you know, you could tune in. You know, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you could probably tune in <laughs> and see... Where he's at, he's a high energy mode early on here, super high energy mode, but no no idea how that's gonna play out here the next 24 hours or so. Everybody has a breaking point. Is he going to sleep? I guess he's gonna sleep there. Yeah, I guess he's gonna sleep there in the box. So, I mean, I could never do anything like this. As you guys have already seen, it's rumored that I fell asleep in Discord this week. It's a rumor. And maybe I was snoring, rumorly, rumored. It's rumored that I was snoring. 
as well. It's hearsay. <laughs> Once on Discord, a guy fell asleep on his keyboard and he said name is typing for hours all night. And everyone was wondering what kind of novel he was writing. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, and I were in that call with you when you woke up and he was like, he was like, Oops, did, I, <laughs> did I wake him up? <laughs> no, I just woke up because it was 340 in the morning and I'm curled up on the couch holding the controller still with my AirPods in. And I had, I were playing, we were playing uh, Ogre Tactics. So I, I think I got up and I just said it to AI and then I went to sleep or something. I can't remember. But yeah. Any rumors. It was all rumors. Guys, that's all I got for the news today. Hey, decent timing. Thank you so much, chat. Thank you so much, chat, for being here for me. Join get, join our Discord and listen to me sleep. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so the weirdest dreams I fall asleep to a video or a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Jen, Jen, Jen goes to sleep to the weirdest shit. It's like weird videos that will make you like, you know, the, the super interesting videos, but like super short, like uh, uh, strangely satisfying videos that always cut off for the good part. It's very frustrating. <sighs> Anyways, that's it for the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B.A.K. Phony again. Chat, you guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to see you.